Hi, I'm Akhilesh Kumar Shivasto. In today's lecture, we will see how to find the merging point in the linked list. So we already have seen uh, how to work with the two linked lists. In this lecture, we'll see that how the two linked lists are joined at some point, and we have to find out that point where those, the, the, those two linked lists are being joined. So let's see a scenario and try to understand the concept. Now let's take a scenario wherein we have uh, the indication or the denotion of the two linked list. Let's say the address of the first element in the first linked list is start one, and address of the first element in the second linked list is a start two. You can see that uh, the first linked list uh, starts from this place and it goes up to this place. It means we have six nodes in the first linked list. The second linked list starts with the node with information seven. But after the node number nine, it takes the address of one of the element in the first linked list. So this point will be called as the merging point. And we have to find out the address of the node, which actually is the merging point of these two linked list. Concept of finding the merging point of the linked list is very simple. We can think of for starting uh, P at the first node in the first linked list. And let's try to find out the number of nodes in the first linked list. Let's say, let's say we have six nodes in the first linked list. And similarly, we have five nodes in the second linked list. How we have counted that we have five, five nodes, five nodes, one, two, three, and after the nine, it is keeping the address of five. So it's the fourth node and the six, which is the fifth node in the second linked list. So if I have found the number of nodes in the first linked list, let's say that is M, which is six, and we have found that the number of nodes in the second linked list is five, then we have to find out what is M minus N. So this M minus N is the number of difference of the number of nodes between the two lists. Here in this case, it is one. So what we will have to do, we will have to move one node ahead in the first linked list. Let's say the address of uh, uh, the node after the first node is P. And then we have to take a Q at the first node, the second linked list. And then we have to move these two simultaneously. And we will have to move these two simultaneously by the time they're not equal. The P and Q obviously are not equal. They are pointing to the different nodes. When we move ahead P, when we move ahead Q, they are not same. Then once again, we move ahead P. And once again, we move ahead Q. These two are also not same. Once again, we move ahead P and Q. Now they are at the same location. So once we have found that they are at the same location, it means that we have found the merging point. Now there are several cases possible in this case. One of the case may be that M is larger than N. So if, if in case M is larger than N, then we need to move P pointer to M minus N locations. And then we have to start moving P and Q simultaneously. Similarly, if N is greater than M, in that case, we have to move Q to N minus M places. There is also a case possible where M is equals to N. And in that case, we do not need to, we do not need to move P and Q at any position because they will have to start the first node itself. Another case is also possible that uh, we don't have any merging point. So in case we don't have any merging point, we will have to return null because indication of the merging point will be a return of the valid address. And in case we are returning null, it means that the merging point does not exist. Now let's try to write the algorithm. Now for writing the algorithm, let us first try to find out the number of nodes in the first linked list. Let's say we have a function count, which finds out the number of nodes in the first linked list. Let's say we are passing start one here, which is the address of the first node in the first linked list. Let's say this is returning M. And we call the same function again with the address of the second linked list. That is a start two. Let's say this is returning M. Now we will have to see which among M and N 
is higher in value. So if n is greater than n, in that case, we will have to move p to m minus n places. So in that case, we are starting this q at the first node in the first link list. And then p also, sorry, in the second link list. And p at the first node in the first link list. Then we will have to move this p for m minus n times. So for i is equals to 1 to m minus n d. We simply are doing p is equals to p dot next. So this way, p will reach to some places. It means m minus n positions ahead. But if this is not the case, it means n is larger than m. So if m is larger, n is larger than n, the similar practice will be followed for n. So if n is larger than m, then p is equals to start 1, then q is equals to start 2, and then we will have to move q to n minus m places ahead. So for i is equals to 1 to n minus m do q is equals to q dot next. The case in which uh, the the case in which we are having the same number of nodes in both the list can be handled by the second case itself. So if I have, if we are starting with the, well, you can take an example like the, if let's say if m is equals to 6 and n is equals to 6, then m minus n will be equals to 0. It means we have to move q to 0 places ahead. It means q will remain at the position where we have initialized it to. So rather than writing this condition, we can ignore this one. And this will work for both the cases wherein n is greater than n and m n and r equal. Now, once this is done, what we have to do, we have to move P and Q simultaneously ahead so that we stop at a place where P and Q become equal. So, I'm just doing a process in the loop. I will write the condition later. And here I'm writing if P is equals to Q, in that case, I will return P, which is the address of the merging point. And the algorithm will terminate here only. Okay. Now, what could be the worst case possible? The worst case possible will be like we are walking in a link list, which terminates here. And this is the second link list. Just a minute, see. Okay, let's take the uh, four nodes in the second link list. So m will be three, n will be four, and there is no merging point. We will move q to n minus n places. It means one place. So q will initialize here, and p will initialize here. When we will move this, p will become null, and q will also become. And meaning of p becoming null or q becoming null is that we could not find the merging point. So here we are applying a condition while p is not equal to null, we'll keep moving this. And once p and q become equal, this is the merging point. But if they do not meet anywhere and p becomes null, in that case, we will have to return null. So if you are able to come out of the loop, we will have to return null, which actually is denoting, which actually is denoting that there is no merging point in the link list. Now, let's try to write the headers and the footers for this algorithm. Just to beautify or do the formalities, this is the algorithm for the merging point. where start 1 and start 2 are given. Okay. 
here we are beginning. The logic starts from here and logic ends here. There is one more correction possible here that if P becomes null or when we are saying that the P and Q become equal, then we can stop there. So rather than writing this line return null, we can avoid this and apply another condition with the loop that while P is not equal to Q, then we should keep moving. And in the end, we should return P. The moment P and Q will become equal, then we can return P. Why it will be successful? We will not write this condition here because it has already been included in the loop condition. This will be uh, successful because when P and Q are at the valid node and P becomes Q, we are returning P. When P and Q become null, they will again be equal. So in that case also we are returning P. So this will work for both the cases. Let me write it afresh. So I'm writing a condition here or uh, while P is not equal to Q, we'll keep moving P is equals to P dot next and Q is equals to Q dot next. I think this was missing in the earlier also. It means the else condition will be there and we will be doing this, this thing that P is equals to P dot next and Q is equals to Q dot next. Please pardon me because this part was left out. So while P is not equal to Q, we will keep moving. Once P becomes equal to Q, in that case, we'll come out of the loop and return this P. So this completes this algorithm. Thank you.